Brandon Staley's defense has failed to live up to the hype in his first two seasons, but in 2023, that side of the football has to live up to the hype. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Lockdown Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogmeyer. We've been covering the Chargers together now for seven seasons, but this is our fifth season as a host of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today and make sure you never miss the show. Go follow or subscribe for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Well, Daniel, after the Chargers hired Brandon Staley, the you know former defensive coordinator of the number one defense in the NFL, the expectations for how that unit was going to perform was very, very high. So now it's time for that defense to live up to that hype. So we're going to get into that, and then we're going to talk about what went wrong with the defense in the 2022 season, and then wrap things up by giving you some reasons for hope for how that unit is going to perform in 2023. Yeah, the defense has to live up to the hype. Brains Daly, as a defensive mind, has to live up to the hype, right? But he's had a lot of things that have gone wrong, obviously, in the last couple of seasons. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. And David, this is something that kind of spurned from a conversation we had on last week's show that we were like, hey, this is something we need to talk about, which is... It's time for the defense to step up. I mean, the Chargers, I feel like, have an offense that we feel really good about going into 2023, but it's still hard right now to trust the defense, David, even with a lot of players that you like on that side of the football, and I think it just comes down to this. If the Chargers kind of want to take that next step as a team, want to become true kind of contenders, I think this is the year that it's put up or shut up time for the Chargers defense. A hundred percent it is. And, and, and a lot of that is, has to do with the financial commitments that are tied to that side of the football. I mean, you have Darwin James making a hundred million dollars. You have Joey Bosa making over a hundred million dollars on a contract. You have JC Jackson. You gave 82 and a half million dollars to Khalil Mack has a contract with, that was worth over a hundred million dollars. So you have a lot of players on this defense that are getting paid a premium And the production, unfortunately, has not been there. So now it's time, especially with those contracts and some very difficult decisions that are going to have to be made after the season. The time, the time is right now for those results. They have to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you just look at what the Chargers defense has been able to do the first couple of seasons under Brandon Staley, it just hasn't been good enough for different reasons, right? In 2021, 30th in points per game allowed, 26th in defensive DVOA, 20th in sacks, 2022, 20 seconds in point per 20 second in points per game, 20th in yards per game, 16th in DVOA, and 14th in sacks. So I think you've seen a minor improvement, but it's still not good enough for the guys you have over there. Because I mean, you brought it up. You have stars. You have Derwin James. You have Joey Bosa. You have Khalil Mack. You have J.C. Jackson. Yeah. And not only that, but you also have I think guys you'd consider above average starters, right? Like a Morgan Fox and Asante Samuel Jr., Michael yeah. Davis. Yeah. Eric Kendricks probably fits in that category as well. And I think that if you have those guys, I mean, obviously you have it for every game since Brandon Staley has taken over, but it's enough to where, okay, with that core, with the guys you have surrounding that, if you are a defensive mastermind, right, if you are one of the best defensive minds in football, you should be able to work around that even with some bumps and bruises along the way, because that's a lot of star power that many defenses don't have. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, you're you're talking about two premium premier edge rushers that when they're on the field, the the stats don't lie. I mean, their their pass rush win percentage is up amongst the highest in the league and they get after it. And then they're both very, you know, just complete football players that their attack against the run and you know their, their pass rush is kind of equally as dominant as far as what they offer and then derwin james we already we've talked about derwin james a million times it's just the guy can do everything and do you know he's pretty pretty much an eraser out there yeah. whoever you want him to take away he is capable of doing that but the the whole point here is the collection of talent that the chargers have on this defensive side of the ball 
has not equated to the success that they should have achieved or enjoyed up to this point and it has not happened the stars have to go out there and shine but the conductor has to put them in the best positions to go out there and make the best music and that is coach brandon staley's job as you know the defensive coordinator of this team exactly as the defensive play caller too right i mean he hasn't given up any of those duties and no he he kind of lucked out a little bit, right? Because he came from the number one defense in the NFL with guys like Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, right? Surrounded yeah. by a pretty good supporting cast of Leonard Floyd and guys like that. But, like, he was never going to necessarily have that with the Chargers. But you did think that, okay, his schematics, the way he sees the game, the way he calls a game should be able to get the most of what the Chargers have right now. And it just doesn't totally feel like that. And we're not talking about Brandon Seeley as a head coach, which no. is totally polarizing, right? Like, I mean, yeah. probably – Got a better record than a team with as many injuries as the Chargers faced last year should have gotten, making, you know, leading that team to the playoffs. Yeah. But obviously, week 18 decision, things like that. And that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about just the defense. And the fact of the matter is, the defense just has to be better. I mean, look at the yeah. AFC playoff teams from last year. The Chiefs were 16th, right? That's about as low as you're going to get from teams that actually did something. They won a Super Bowl. But the Bills were second, Bengals sixth, Ravens third as far as points per game allowed, Jaguars were 12th. The Dolphins were 24th. The Chargers were 22nd. Both those teams got bounced in the first round, right? You go to the NFC. Yeah. The Seahawks were 25th. The Vikings were 30th. Both those teams got bounced in the first round. So, like, getting having a bad defense in the regular season, you can get away with at times. Yeah. But it usually catches up to you in the playoffs unless you have, you know, one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen, probably the best in Patrick Mahomes as far as yeah. talent goes, and he can bail you out. The Chargers right. need their defense to come up and help this team take its way to the next level. And I just think that if you're looking at the all-in moves the Chargers made this year, restructuring all the contracts and making, you know, guys like Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack have 30 plus million dollar salary cap hits in 2024, this is the last kind of chance for this core like we've talked about. And yeah. you're getting another prime year of all of these star players. Like it feels like this is a year where something has to come together. It it I mean, it, there's really no other alternative because after this season this core is going to be gone. So they're going to have to find a new formula on how they are going to make this work. And who knows if Brandon Staley is still going to be here if it does not work. Right. So, I mean, that's another aspect of it that that you kind of have to keep in mind, but especially since they brought all these guys in for him specifically, this is back just the days in Khalil Max and Morgan Fox's right. They built this defense around what he likes to call kind of thing. All of these moves were all made intentionally by him. He wanted to go get all of the stars to play all of the roles in his movie. And unfortunately, that movie has flopped up to this point. So (laughs) we need the sequel to come back and have these guys be able to go out there and play and play the roles they they were expected to play and stay on the field and stay available so so that they can go out there and execute it. I mean, I think that's a large part of what the Chargers were doing this offseason was, man, I just need to get these guys back together one more time to get them to play together so that they can really work off of each other and really honestly complement each other extremely well. I mean, you look at it. I mean, if they're secondary with all the talent they have can marry up with that pass rush that we know the potential is there for, like the vision for what this Chargers defense can be is completely different from what we've seen up to this point. Well, and the biggest thing is this. If the Chargers' defense is good, the sky is the limit for this team because it's something we're not always factoring into the equation when we're talking about the Chargers because they have just underwhelmed over the first two seasons. But, like, I trust the Chargers' offense. I think the Chargers' offense is going to be very good at minimum in 2023. I I, I think that very good is their kind of floor, right? And they could be great. Like, even just good – you know, barely top 10 would be a surprise for me as far as the Chargers offense goes. If you can marry that with an above average defense, like I think you put yourself in true contender status. Like that's what I think having a good defense does for you. And honestly, like just giving Justin Herbert some help, right? We talked about his rookie contract and he's still cheap right now, which obviously helps this whole equation out and you can spend all the big time money on defensive free agents. But at the same time, He's been doing it all by himself. He's lost too many, you know, 30 to 27 games in his career. Like, yeah. The dude needs some help defensively, and I think for the Chargers, a lot of things have to change for that picture to come together in 2023, right? And I think it starts with looking at what went wrong in 2022 because there was a lot that ended up going wrong that led to the Chargers, even though they made an improvement, 
still not being good enough to actually take this team to the next level. So coming up after this, we'll talk about the biggest things that went wrong, like the running game or the Chargers missing stars like Joey Bosa and JC Jackson, their high price free agent acquisition, right? A lot of things went wrong. And I think that's where you have to start is where to actually try to improve this team going into 2023. So we're going to get into that coming up right after this. First, I need to tell you guys about the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network, and that is FanDuel. And I need to tell you guys that baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, guys, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets, even if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to join today, and you're going to get the great promotions they have available for you all the time, like same game parlays, being able to have multiple things riding in the same game to escalate your winnings. And they also have the parlay builder, which will help you build the exact really fun way to build your parlay and get you a lot of action. And you can even do MLB player award parlays like Shohei Otani winning AL MVP and the AL Cy Young Award. You get a pretty nice payout for that. All fast and easy to you in a safe and secure app that gets you paid instantly. So don't miss out on your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, David, well, when you're trying to figure out how to fix something, right, you have to look at why it went wrong to begin with. And I think there's yes. a lot of places you could start with why the Chargers defense didn't live up to the hype in 2022. Because this was, hey, Brandon Staley has his guys now, right? They didn't have yeah. his guys out goes in Chen and Uosu, right? And yeah. Kazir White and other guys he didn't want to retain. Justin yeah, Justin Jones. Jones, right? Yeah. Sure. And then he brought in his guys, the guys he hand selected, like you talked about. But yeah. unfortunately, I think one of the biggest reasons we don't know what's going to happen in 2023 is because we didn't really see that exact group get to be together enough in 2022. And I think it starts with the stars you have on that side of the ball and the key starters that missed a ton of games for you last year, where that is one of the things that it's hard not to talk about when you're talking about why this defense failed to live up to expectations, especially when you have someone like Joey Bosa, right? And one of the things that gave you the most hope going into last year was that you could see him and Khalil Mack together at the same time. That was the the most enticing thing, right? That was the most exciting thing that happened was when Tom Telesco did something completely uncharacteristic. He made a massive trade and yeah. they brought in a bona fide superstar in Khalil Mack. And you're like, man, as soon as that happened, you're like, I cannot wait to see Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa just terrorize offensive linemen and make them pick their poison, right? That's one of the tweets that I put out that I was expecting to see. I was hoping to see. And we did. We did see it in the first couple games of the season. We saw Joey Bosa and Cleo Mack against the Raiders go off. Like, Cleo Mack had three sacks. Joey had a sack and a half. Yep. It was a phenomenal performance. And we're like, okay, man, like, getting your hands together. Like, this is what we're going to see the rest of the season. And then Joey Bosa gets hurt. And, yep. and he's out for 12 games. And so that, that has a just a massive impact on the Chargers defense and the, having to find someone to replace that production. There is not another Joey Bosa on this face of the earth here. Yeah. So when he goes out, you have to try to find that. And the Chargers tried in the entire season with multiple different players and it just didn't happen. JC Jackson missing 12 games. DJ missed three games. And then you have, you know, the injuries on the defensive line, like Austin Johnson and Otito Abonia, like just a lot of injuries to have to have to overcome. But those high priced ones, man, they hurt the most. Yeah. You also, have, you know, Christian Covington missing most of the season as a rotational defensive lineman. You have your starting yeah. slot corner and Bryce Callahan missing a handful of games, too. Like, that is the thing defensively, like, besides those positions that got hit really hard, like, yeah. you got some pretty healthy seasons out of some important players, but it's just, like, when two of your highest three, you know, two of the top four paid defenders on your team are missing time, it's just going to be hard for any defense to overcome that because that's how many resources you have invested in those guys. So, yeah. having both Joey Bosa and J.C. Jackson miss 12 games, would it just it, it devastated what you hope to see from that defense and also just J.C. Jackson not playing well. Yeah. Even when he was in there. Just right? never but being, it just never seemed like he was right at any Never point. got comfortable yeah. in Brandon Staley's defense. Now he has no. a full off season, you know, or at least going into his second season. We'll see what happens. But the other biggest thing, David, something that's plagued the charge for a long time, the run defense. It's hard to talk about why the defense is bad 
without talking about the run defense, and we've talked to the everydayers have heard us talk about it, so much more than just defensive linemen. Yes, that's a big part of it, yeah. right? But this is a collective effort. This is a team effort as to why this team was so bad in the running game. Schematically, it's a problem, too, because you go yeah. with a lot of light boxes and brands mm-hmm. with defense. But that is something where if you're looking at what went wrong, I mean, it's at the top of the list. Oh, without a doubt. And it was a crushing problem that the Chargers suffered this season before. But, yeah. I mean, it's just really bad. And you have to hear the numbers to be able to understand. The Chargers allowed 138.9 rushing yards in and 22 touchdowns and 4.6 yards per carry average in 2021 last year despite adding all of those uh, other players it got worse they they allowed uh, 145.8 rushing yards per game and a completely dead last in the league 5.4 yards per carry average which is disgusting (laughs) i mean that's basically they hand the ball off to the running back two times and you got a fresh set of downs. I mean, it's impossible to play team defense in that manner and expect to win when the other team can impose their will on you, Daniel, and there's nothing you can do. They can do anything they want to on the offensive side. Yeah. And there's a lot of parallels between the problems with the Chargers' offense and defense, right? Because the run game offensively lack was lackluster as well last year. Yeah. And, but, yeah, I mean, being 32nd in yards per carry allowed is just, you know, inexcusable. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, when you're talking about run defense, I think first it starts with just guys not being in the right spot, right? I mean, Brain yeah. Staley's run defense has so much to do with the run fits, like we talked with right. Braden Taylor about, right? and where yeah. everyone, the gap that you're supposed to fill and being in the right spot. There yeah. was just way too many times that didn't happen, which led to a ton of big perimeter runs, which is really where this team got hurt the most, which has Mm -hmm. almost nothing to do with your defensive tackles, right? But more than anything, too many missed tackles. Cleo Mack, Bryce Callahan, Drew Tranquil, Kenneth Murray, Austin Johnson, J.C. Jackson, and Jasir Taylor all had a missed tackle percentage over 13% last year. Mack, Murray, Tranquil, Callahan, and James all had 10-plus missed tackles. And just Drew Tranquil and Kenneth Murray by themselves missed 35 tackles last That's year. That's right, right in the middle of your defense. That is not crippling. filling lanes, taking bad angles, not being able to get guys on the ground. And that was part of it. And those big perimeter yeah. plays were part of a bigger general problem with the Chargers, which was just giving up too many explosive plays in general. Yes. I mean, the numbers are are startling. And, and they're honestly, quite frankly, they're disturbing. I mean, 92 pass plays allowed explosive pass plays allowed 46 run plays allowed there were only four teams in the nfl last year that allowed more explosive runs than the chargers they were the cleveland browns the new york giants the chicago bears and the houston texans all of those teams were not playoffs the playoff teams except for the giants obviously but i mean a lot a lot of that had to do with Brian Dayball and what he was able to do with them, but all the other teams didn't even sniff the playoffs. They didn't even come close. And so it's just, you cannot expect to win if you're giving up that many explosive plays. And and we're talking about pass plays over 15 yards, rushing plays over 12 yards. It was littered and it was plagued. They play it plagued the chargers all year. Yeah, it was from the Royal Football Substack, and they have a chart of all the explosive yeah, plays shout out offensively to them. and defensively. But yeah, passing plays of 16 plus yards or running 16, plays of 12 me. plus yards. So the Chargers, as far as the rushing allowed, were 29th in the league, 16 in passing plays, 25th in the league. And the part of the reason that's such a big problem is that is one of the things that Brandon Steele's defense is supposed to pride itself in stopping. Right. Limit the explosions, right? Not giving up explosive plays. And even though the Chargers, you know, as far as passing yards per game, like you could look at that and say, okay, that's a great number. Yeah. Okay, but you also give up 92 passing plays of 16 yards or more. And I think that was just a reflection of broken plays on the back end, yeah. right? Guys not being lined up correctly. Yep. The big runs that were allowed. Because let's not forget, David, this is the team that had – Four straight games of allowing a 40-plus yard rush in a game, right? A 40-plus yard I was trying to run. forget that. It was six of seven games that they did <sighs> last year. The only game in that seven-game span that they didn't allow a 40-plus yard rush was to the anemic, right, Broncos, Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett-led offense. So that's yeah, not with, really Yeah, big. with no Javante Williams, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right. with no Javante Williams, which is an important part of that. But overall, the Chargers yeah. allowed 138 explosive plays. <sighs> the average for the NFL, average, right, being average was 121. 
that that's 17 more explosive plays than the average. Guess how many that is? One per game. Worse mm-hmm. than what the average defense is. So I think that shows and, you And you of, felt it, too. Like, you oh felt yeah. it last year when, when, you, when you saw it, it, it. And they were just so back backbreaking. It's not just the play of them getting, you know, f, you know the, the When it all showed itself in yards. the playoffs, right? Yeah, like, but all it's those the momentum, too. Up. Yeah. It's the, the momentum. You, you just When you give up that play, it just lets the air out of the balloon. Totally does. And, like... It, like I said before, a lot of these things are reflections and you see a little bit on both sides. Like the Chargers had the Chargers allowed 15 more explosive plays than they forced offensively. Right. So like they have Justin Herbert and with that offense, they still were had 15 less explosive plays than their defense allowed. And guess what? Insane. They're not going up against Justin Herbert every week. That's insane. No. Those numbers should not exist. They had a negative 15 explosive play margin last year, which ranked 24th in the NFL and a lot of the things that ended up leading to an early playoff exit and almost all those things, a broken play touchdown against Sante Samuel Jr. getting toasted. You have the fourth and one play with Travis Etienne getting a huge chunk. Like all of those bad things, not mm-hmm. being able to finish giving up explosive plays came back to haunt you at the end of your season. But the good news is David, there is still time for hope in 2023 and we have some reasons to talk about. So we are going to get into that coming up right after this. David, we've talked a lot of doom and gloom about the Chargers defense since Brandon Staley took over in 2021. But I think going into this year, there's still a lot of reason I think that you could say, okay, hey, this could be the year that it comes back together for you. And I think it starts with me, one of the things we talked about a little bit before the show, with the continuity. But speaking of continuity, our favorite listeners are the everydayers out there. And we appreciate you guys checking out this show. And on Wednesday, we want to get... To your guys' questions, it's been a while since we've done a mailbag show, so we will be reaching out to you guys for your questions for Wednesday show, so make sure you're back here with us for that. But continuity, I think, is a big key word for this Chargers defense last year, Dave, and I touched on it a little bit earlier, but every projected starter that the Chargers have, have sp- has spent time in Brandon Staley's defense outside of Eric Kendricks, right? Yeah. That, I think, is huge for me. Joey Bosa, Derwin James, Michael Davis, Zant. Morgan Fox, SJD, Alohi Gilman, Kenneth Murray, right? Nine of your 11 defensive starters have three years in Brandon Staley's defense going into the year. That is something I think when you're talking about, okay, why should this unit that hasn't made a lot of additions get better? I would point to that as one of the reasons. And and I love that you brought that up because I think it is a great, great point because Brandon Staley's defense is notoriously very, very complex and there's a lot of moving parts And it took a while. I mean, just looking at the product on the field, it took a while for the defense to really click for them. Even a veteran like Kyle Van Noy, right? Like, look how long it took him last year as a veteran who's played on multiple teams to actually get things to click. And once he did, he was playing, you know, lights out. Yeah, about 12 games. It took him about 12 games for him to really figure it out. But then, yeah, he had a sack in every game to finish out the season. And that was very impactful. It was very helpful. And so once they really started to to figure things out and they were able to think less and play fast and not have to think about it, that's when you saw the best performances that the Chargers defense was able to provide you. And so I think that continuity of not having to like continuously try to learn the system and you're just trying to fine tune and you're just trying to get better at the, the attention to detail things, the little things that can make you execute the defense at a higher level. I think those are the things that are going to show itself this year with that limited turnover and that, you know, the maximum time on task um, in the system. When you have to think going into 2023, they lost five, at least five defensive starters based on what you would call them, right? Chen yeah. Wosu, Kazir White, Justin Jones, Chris Harris Jr. as well. Limbaugh Joseph, all those guys had to be replaced going into last year. That's a lot of moving parts. Now you have basically everyone on this defense has played in this defense before, which is huge, except for one guy, and and that's Eric Kendricks. And I do think that Eric Kendricks is also going to be one of the reasons that you can hope for this defense to improve. Yeah, I think that's a great point, too. And also, I'm not as worried about Eric Kendricks and, and, and him not being in Brandon Staley's defense 
because he played with Mike Zimmer, who runs a very similar style of defense that Brandon Staley does, just with obviously some different verbiage. So I think he's going to be able to ingratiate himself in this defense, get comfortable and be able to go out there and execute that because of that familiarity and because, you know, this is an all pro linebacker in, in the NFL. So let's not forget about that. So I think his commanding presence, his understanding of the defense and his ability to get people lined up the right way. I think those things are going to help connect the back end of the defense to the front end of the defense, which I think you're going to get better production out of it. So I'm excited to see what his impact is going to be on this defense. But yes, Eric Hendricks is a big reason for hope here. Yeah, I mean, since he's you know, even became a defensive coordinator, I think he's the most accomplished linebacker that's ever played in Brandon Staley's defense no doubt. specifically, right? I mean, I think the other thing is, too, when you're talking about, okay, what went wrong in 2022? Yeah. Run defense. I think yeah. he is an upgrade over Drew Tranquil as yeah, a run definitely. defender. That's one thing. And a tackler, right? Yeah, May, yeah. Way less missed tackles yeah. right, from Eric Hendricks than he saw. Over a Drew longer Tranquil. period of time, too. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, yeah, he's trusted, you know, he has the track record and he has good instincts and coverage. He's great at reading and feeling against the run. And I think the other thing too, is the broken plays, all the explosive plays that we saw last year. This feels like someone they really trust to be that green dot guy in the middle, yeah. getting their defense organized, making sure players are in the right spot. And I mean, Brandon Staley could hardly not giggle when he was asked if he was going to be the green dot for him in this defense, even as a first year player in this defense. And you have to hope he can keep picking it up. And even more than that, right, what can he do for Kenneth Murray, right? Mm -hmm. What can he do for this Chargers defensive line and getting those guys in the right spot and helping them out, right? It also has had success as a blitzer, even though I give the edge to Tranquil on that. He still can be usable in that regard as well. And I think about, David, if you're looking for a reason to have hope for this Chargers defense in 2023, I think you still, even if it feels unlikely, have to consider, okay, what if you do get these guys who missed last year big time coming back and not just coming back and playing well. Like what if you have these star players like JC Jackson and Joey Bosa come out this come upcoming season and have a comeback year that really changes everything for your defense. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it could be massive. I mean, you consider JC Jackson, if you get a prime version of him, able to lock down the opposing number one wide receiver on the other side that allows you to have Michael Davis on, on the other side, which, you know, last year, Michael Davis was the best, one of the best defenders on the team period, yeah. regardless of the uh, of position for Had them. the best stretch of his career. But I mean, yeah, during that four yeah. game winning streak, right? Like that was Michael Davis on straight up lockdown mode. Yeah. Like, and how much of that can keep going, right? Yeah. So uh, my point is you get JC Jackson on one side, Michael, Michael Davis on the other, you throw Asante Samuel Jr. in the slot, which I think is probably something that they want to do, but they just weren't able to. And do. he's been taking reps there in, in mandatory minicamp as well, which is important to know. Asante it is. Has, it is. So yeah. I think that's the vision. That's what you would love to see. If you have that, J that prime JC Jackson, that guy can lock, lock the number one receiver down and get those interceptions that's huge but the big guy for me is Joey Bosa I've said it time and time again and I don't think we have seen a prime Joey Bosa in probably three or four years because of the chronic pain that he's admitted he's been dealing with and he kind of just lived with and now he's got those problems corrected he was able to get a full off season he seems to be in good spirits seems to be very healthy if you get a prime Joey Bosa that's healthy Daniel he is a game wrecker he is the yeah. biggest difference maker that the Chargers have if he plays 15 16 games I would be surprised if he does not have 14 15 sacks because I don't think we've seen the best of Joey Bosa but the time is right now for him yeah, and not just for him either, right? I mean, for yeah. a lot of people. But, like, it, yeah, he helps your pass rush. He helps your run defense. He was he had yeah. the number one pass rush win rate in 2022, even in those limited snaps, even working with a torn groin, right? So, like, yeah, he has all the potential. We know that. It's hard to imagine, but it is, I think, a reason to still have hope. And I'd say the other thing is, okay, Brain Staley's defense still has gotten better year yeah. over year, right? Like, it's gotten a little bit better. Can you take anything away from that four game win streak? I think the hard part of that is, is like it was against terrible quarterbacks. Yeah. And it's just as soon as, you know, week 18 comes and you decide to play your starters and they're still getting spanked by, you know, a Broncos team that just lost their head coach. Like it's just yeah. how do you have faith in that defense, the same defense that gave up, you know, 24 points in the second half of a playoff game to lose you that game that you're up 27 0? Like, yeah. They have to prove it. And I think as far as Brandon Staley goes, like, 
you have to get the most out of this defense right now. Like, it's not yeah. going to be perfect. You're not going to get all these guys to play in every game more than likely, right? But, like, this has to be where your scheme gets them through and brings the rest of it together and gets most out of the, you know, the stars that you have and not just yeah. get the most out of the stars that you have, but also at the same time, being able to hide your biggest weaknesses because there are still some very big question marks on this defense at linebacker, at safety, yeah. at defensive line. He yeah. has to be able to cover those up. It's time. It, it, he's had long enough. It's year three. He has almost every player coming back. Charge defense has to be much better in 2023. But that's going to wrap things up for today's show. The everydayers know, though, we are in three days a week right now, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day, except for the offseason. We'll be back with you guys on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we'll be getting into a Chargers mailbag, so make sure you hit us up on all social media. You can find us on Twitter at LockdownLAC. You can ask us a question on Instagram at LockdownChargers or on our Lockdown Chargers Facebook page. You can also hit us up directly. You can find me on Twitter at DanTalkSports and David Drogmeyer on Twitter at DroTalkSD, and his DMs are always open. The best way to make sure you never miss the show, though, is by going and subscribing uh, to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and following the show wherever you get your podcast from as well. And we will be always be with you guys. So make sure you guys are back here for that Chargers mailbag. I think there's a lot of big offseason questions to be asked. So we'll be back with you guys then. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.